For today's watch review, we're taking a look at a Seiko and lowercase collaboration watch. This is the SBEP023, or more simply known as the DigiTuna. So let's get right into it. Starting off as always with price, just doing a quick internet search, I was finding these going for around $250 all the way up to $400. I myself personally bought it for $330 before shipping and handling. And I want to say that these are only sold in Japan. I could be wrong, but that's the only place that I could find it at. So, you know, keep in mind whatever price you're seeing. Um, there is going to be quite a steep shipping cost so just keep that in mind and of course if you watch the channel you know that i have a pension for nato bands so i immediately removed the silicone band and put in this khaki one because i just felt like it matched the overall color scheme so just keep that in mind this is not the stock band that you're getting with the watch and let's just do a quick 360 so you can see what it looks like in different angles of light and just to see what we're working with here, here are some pushers on the side, and then there's another pusher on the other side, and then here's the case back. Very boring case back, so a little bit disappointed there, but it is a digital watch, so what can you expect? Going over the case dimensions, with the shroud from top to bottom, we get about 50 millimeters, and if we include that pusher, so from pusher, to three o'clock it goes up to 51 millimeters and then for case height that comes in just over 14 millimeters i measured it at around 14.3 and then lug to lug is the same with the diameter at 50 millimeters lug to lug for weight with the main watch and the included silicone band it comes in at 79 grams or two and three quarter ounces Perfect weight there, really good for everyday use. Here is the wrist shot. I have a seven and a half inch wrist. Now well, seven and a half to eight inches depending on the time of day, but very comfortable. That 50 millimeters lug to lug uh, and how that pairs with the overall case diameter is perfect. And for those of you that own tunas, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it is just made for NATO straps, which is also a very cool thing. Now going over the functions and features, starting off with the main display, we can see right here at top we've got calendar data, main time, and dual time right here on the bottom. You can tell that it's dual time because there's that little globe symbol right there. Now if you wanted to shift which time was displayed, you would hit this center adjust button right here at 9 o'clock. And there you can see that that globe has moved to the center position indicating that the main time displayed is your world time. We also have minute markers on the outer edge of the display and that is so that we can use the bi-directional bezel. If some people were wondering why would a digital watch have a bezel or have a rotating bezel and these minute markers are exactly that reason why. So you can just line up your pip to wherever the current minutes are at and then utilizing those markers you can then tell how much time has elapsed. So, you know, it's just a cool feature, um, you know, not necessary, but I like the fact that you have multiple ways of telling time or counting down time and, uh, you know, more the merrier. You can never have too many features, especially because this one doesn't really get in the way of anything. So that bezel, like I said before, is a bi-directional bezel. It is just a friction bezel, but it is very tight and solid. It doesn't feel loose at all. This watch is not ISO certified because it doesn't have a ratcheting bezel, but even with that being said, this thing is not going anywhere unless you deliberately move it. Now let's go over the different modes. Your mode button is right here at four o'clock. The first one is stopwatch, and then you can save whatever you record here in the recall function. You can save up to 100 units of memory. Now you've got the timer, alarm, and there are three alarms that you can set. And then this is your solar menu. 
and this is where it tells you how much power is being generated and how much you have in the reserve. So on the right hand side, this is your power generation, um, I guess, indication. So it goes from zero all the way down here, all the way up to 10. So now you can see that it's not generating much power because it's kind of an overcast day and there's not really much sun inside the house and I've got the lights off. And then here is your power reserve indicating how much charge you have in the battery going from zero all the way at the bottom to 10 at the very top. So you can see that I've got a full charge on this specific watch. I forgot to mention that on the main time display, you also have your charge level indicated here, right above the six o'clock position. And, you know, I don't know, I feel like they could have left that out. Maybe they could have just copied Casio and had a low, middle, high um, indication. This just kind of seems like overkill. It also makes me feel like it doesn't last very long, even though I know it has several months of power reserve. This watch also has a backlight. The backlight itself is very good. As you can see on the screen, it's like that perfect color. Not too bright, not too dull, just beautiful. But utilizing it or accessing it is, I don't know, I don't wanna use the word dumb, but I don't know what they were thinking. So you tap the watch. And when I say tap, I don't mean that this is a touch screen. Basically, you physically agitating the watch will turn on the backlight. So that means you can tap it here, you can tap it here, you can tap it on the bottom of the case back and the light will turn on. So, you know, I noticed this at night as I was driving my car, I would put my hands, you know, not hard on the steering wheel, but just that act of me putting my hands on the steering wheel would turn on the backlight. And you can adjust the sensitivity but even with all the different adjustments of sensitivity, the backlight would still turn on with any kind of like abrupt, um, not violent, I don't want to use the word violent, but like strong movements um, would turn on that backlight. So just keep that in mind. And for the crystal, we've got just a regular mineral crystal, no hard legs here, but for its intended use, I think that's fine. And then the only thing left is water resistance. Um, you can see right here, 20 bar or 200 meters. So again, perfect for diving or if you're like me, desk diving. The overall build quality is also fantastic. I mean, with the weight, you wouldn't expect it to feel very dense or heavy because you know, it is a lighter watch. However, with that being said, because everything is so solid and tight, uh, it's it's got a very, uh, I don't want to say hefty because it's not, but just a solid overall feeling um, that you can just tell immediately upon getting your hands on it. The overall finishing is also very well done from the bronze coloration on the bezel to the pushers. I will say that one side the pusher is a knurled texture and on the other side you've got this more of a circular finish or circular texturing on it. I don't know why they did that. I would have preferred knurling on all of the pushers, but either way, they're all very um, well constructed and nicely done. So I'm not gonna lie to you, I came into this watch purchase knowing that I wasn't gonna like it just because I knew that the backlight function was like a touch function. And to me, that's just dumb and I really don't like it, but Everything else about it, from how it looks, to how it feels, to how it functions, and how user-friendly it is, is all phenomenal. So, I guess in this case, the pros outweigh the cons, because as far as cons go, there really is only that one. And with all the good things that are going for the SBEP-023, I, I feel like that tap function is forgivable. Now, does that mean that I recommend it to you? You know, if you're in the market for a digital watch and you're not a collector and you really only need one or two watches in your collection, I would say pass on it because it is sort of like overpriced for what it is considering what you can get from other companies like ProTrek. You know, you can get very similar watches with even more features like Multiband 6. But as a collector, I feel like this is going to be one of those watches where 10, 20 years go by and then you're going to regret not getting one of these when they were readily available. And the reason why I say that is because looking back in my life, and I've only been alive for 33 years, there have been 
at several instances where I was just kicking myself saying, man, I wish I had gotten into watches earlier because there were a couple of Seiko watches or digital Seiko watches that were available at the time and I just never got them. And as a collector, <laughs> I get so frustrated because I would have loved to have owned some of those watches. If you've got your mind set on this one though, or any different variation of this model, I mean, you're not gonna go wrong because you've got a lot of good features here, um, great dimensions, you've got 200 meters of water resistance, you've got that resin shroud um, that really gives it that uh, protection and durability that you want in a watch like this. So if you do really want this watch, you're gonna get a watch that's gonna last you for a very long time and it's gonna survive most of the things that you throw at it. So my verdict would be that if you were to come up to me and ask me to recommend to you a watch, this would definitely not be the one that I'm recommending. However, if you went on your own and ended up buying one anyways, you'd have a very good quality watch with some minor quirks, but a very good quality watch nonetheless. So that's all I got to say. I hope you enjoyed this review. I do have several reviews coming up, so make sure to stay tuned, subscribe, like, share, and all that good stuff. And um, again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.